Cincinnati enters a unique year for many reasons. And the first one is obviously going to the Big 12, but also bringing in Scott Satterfield as their head coach. The 10 guys we'll talk about today are going to lead the charge. And it'll be interesting to see how do they adapt to these circumstances? How do they adapt to this new regime? And we'll start with the defense. This is a defense that should be just fine. I think they have plenty of talent returning. And Sammy Anderson is one of those players that will help out a defensive back that could play all across the field, did a little bit of everything for this defense last year. And that's saying something. Now you get him back, you get him to be able to do the same thing for this new regime. And that's going to be really exciting. I think that he can take a step forward. We saw a number of big plays from him last year and the secondary should be just fine uh, with the ten, even with the talent that they lose. Now, another group that will be just fine is the defensive line. Eric Phillips had a big year for him, and I think that you can expect him to take a step forward as well. Yes, Big 12 is going to present quite a few challenges, but Eric Phillips is someone who can handle that. He has good size at 6'3", 275, and you saw the production that showcased what he can do on the defensive line. Now you're facing probably tougher competition, but I don't think that the step is as big as a lot of people realize. I think that it's a, a step that Cincinnati... What Luke Fickle did, he brought this program to new heights. He got them to a level where making a transition like this shouldn't be that difficult. And that's a huge for a program that maybe takes a step back this year, probably takes a step back this year. But it's a matter of if it's a small step or a big step. Now, offensively is going to look a lot different than what we saw last year. You're looking at Satterfield's offense and what it'll look like. It's going to look drastically different. But he has done a great job of uh, getting players to come in from the transfer portal, and wide receiver is one of them. Xavier Henderson comes in from Florida at 6'3", 200 pounds. I think that he has good potential. We've been kind of waiting for him to break out at Florida. It just didn't happen. And now he gets to reunite with his former teammate in Emory Jones, the quarterback who we'll talk about in a little bit here. Last year, 410 yards and two touchdowns. Now, if he can be the feature guy, I like what his – Rods are having a big year, and it's just a matter of the chemistry he finds with Jones. Now, Emory Jones is someone we'll talk about as another player that could have a breakout season. Emory Jones is someone who I think a lot of people expected big things. We saw what Florida's done with the quarterback position in the past, and I think everyone expected him to be a great fit in Dan Mullen's offense. Thought he could maybe be the next Dak Prescott. Just hasn't happened, and I think that Arizona State didn't do him any favors either by not utilizing the rushing ability. That's really where he's going to thrive. And I think that he'll figure out that that way, uh, get back to his ways with Satterfield and Cincinnati. And that's huge. Now, the defense, again, I can't say enough good things about what the defense has done in the last few years. And this group isn't going to be, uh, the ceiling is probably not as high as it used to be, but guys like Brian Threats will play a big role in keeping the tradition going. Again, the ceiling may not be as high as it was, but this will still be a good defense. And Threats is one of those guys, a player who can throw his weight around, even though he weighs 195, someone who's not afraid to make big plays downfield. He's not afraid to make big hits downfield. And that's helped him be productive. That's helped him disrupt the passing attack that he's facing and create incompletions when you maybe don't expect them. That's something that will be huge in a, a conference that features a number of explosive offenses. They're going to be tested just like they were in the AAC. And because they have that previous experience, I don't have too many concerns. Now back to the offense, the rushing attack will be the feature, I think, of this offense. Satterfield has done a great job of creating good rushers, and I think that's going to continue. A player to me who is still underrated is former LSU transfer Corey Kiner. Was in kind of a crowded backfield last year. I think he gets to take a step forward and be the feature back in 2023. And I really like how he runs the football 362 yards last year, five touchdowns. I'm really excited to see what he can do with more touches. Now, whether or not he's able to thrive, it, we'll see again, a lot of this with a new regime, you don't really know who's going to be the starter. You know, don't know who's going to be a featured player. Those are things that have to get sorted out and they will in due time, but it's just a matter of being patient to be able to figure out Who's going to be the guy? Who's going to be the featured back? And I think Corey Kiner is in a great position to be that guy for Cincinnati. Now, flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, we talked about the transfer portal offensively. Satterfield did a great job of doing 
that same thing for the defensive side of the ball. Daniel Greshiak, you're looking at a player who can come in from Utah State and make an instant impact, someone who's going to get things going right off the bat. You're looking at a player who is disruptive in the Mountain West and can do the same thing in the Big 12. 6'1", 250 pounds, and someone who, again, this defense needs help on the edge, but they have quite a bit of talent to make that happen. And he's just one of those guys, 13 tackles for loss, eight and a half sacks in 2022. And I think that he could have a fun year in 2023. I think the tools are there. And with the guys he has around him, this could be a really fun defensive line. Now a player who's going into a new position defensively and someone who I've been really excited to watch for the last couple of years is Deshaun Pace, brother of Ivan Pace, the extremely productive linebacker who somehow didn't get drafted in the NFL draft last year. Deshaun Pace has been an Afro playmaker for Cincinnati. Now he did take a little bit of a step back last year, but in 2021, you saw a, an elite playmaker who thrived in Cincinnati's defense. I think that the move to defensive back will be huge for him. I think that helps him quite a bit. You see the athleticism that he plays with. You've been able to see what he can do as a playmaker for this defense. And I think that he only continues to do that at defensive back, probably playing more of that nickel role. And he's actually slimmed down at 6'2", 212, has good size. And I'm excited to see what it means for him. I think that helps his draft stock. I think that he is headed to a good place and it's just a matter of figuring out the transition getting used to playing that new position as well the defense like i said is set up front though that's where things will really help out that secondary juan briggs comes back as one of the more underrated defensive tackles in college football 6'2, 297 pounds the former virginia transfer came into Cincinnati and made an instant impact. I think that he was one of those players that you just expected to be solid. And he was, and he was disruptive at times too. And he plays that position where you're just not going to get a ton of, of love because people don't pay attention to that position. You're not putting up big numbers in the box score and his teammate we'll talk about in a little bit did that as well. This is arguably one of the best duos in terms of defensive tackles into your defensive linemen in college football, and Juwan Briggs is just one part of that. The other part of that is Dante Corleone, 6'2", 318 pounds. And again, production, not going to wow you. You're, the box score isn't going to make you think, wow, this guy is insane. But he is someone that you definitely need to pay attention to, someone who can be an absolute problem for any team that they face. And I think that he could have an even bigger year in 2023 even going into the big 12 this is a team that's going to rely on its front seven it's going to rely on the defensive line to make a lot of plays and Dante Corleone is going to make that happen now Cincinnati probably sitting at the bottom of the conference this year uh, unless proven otherwise I just I have a lot of concerns about what they lost versus what they have coming back or what they added in terms of the coaching staff and even some of the transfers now if some of these players take a step forward, specifically Emory Jones, I'm going to be dead wrong about this team. But I think that the magic from that playoff run has disappeared. I think that you're looking at a team that is going through a transition with a coaching staff, which always takes you a step back. But I think the talent level has decreased here. Now, Satterfield has done a good job on the recruiting trail, I think, of making sure that they don't take a huge step back. But it might be a little bit before we see some success in the Big 12 for Cincinnati, which is disappointing, but I don't think it's unexpected. Now, again, if I'm wrong, I will happily say that I'm wrong, but I think right now we're looking at a team that has plenty of talent, but it's just a matter of the key positions being able to step up. If they're able to do that, this will be a really fun season, and Satterfield will have a good start to his tenure at Cincinnati and in the Big 12.